The concept of, or rather just the need for, a secondary computer for live streaming your computer games, or even just having a streaming computer for your video game console streaming, has become very popular in the last year or two. But not a lot of people who might benefit from having a dedicated streaming computer can afford an entire high-end desktop computer build, or maybe don't have the space for it, or just don't want to deal with the hassle of it, or to build it themselves. Well, I'm here to pose a broadcast piece of hardware, the Epifan Webcaster X2, as a potential alternative to that kind of setup, even though that's kind of more of an off-label use for it, and show how it can be set up for this kind of use, plus I have one to give away. Details on that later in the video. The Mod Mic Wireless can boldly go where no mic has gone before. This microphone can attach to any headphones, requires no additional wires, features very low latency, a dual capsule microphone, 12 hour battery life, and LED indicators on the receiver so you know when you're muted and or when the battery is running low. And you can basically run your entire house without ever losing a signal. What more could you ask for? Learn more by clicking the link in the video description. So this is the Webcaster X2. It is a broadcasting box that costs just under $300, which is definitely much cheaper than you could build a dedicated streaming computer for. And it's designed more for kind of more real broadcast scenarios where it's the end point for a total live stream setup, be that with a full video switcher or another form of audio and video mixing solution. And I actually have a couple of my local broadcasting buddies using the original webcaster, the X1, for a lot of local sports broadcasting. And it has apparently worked out quite well for them. Uh, and this is their revision to it. So it is a small box with a dedicated hardware encoder that runs on Android. And it comes in this very nice chassis. This is obviously much smaller than any normal computer you could buy that is capable of this. And it's outfitted with quite a bit of I.O. It has full Wi-Fi connectivity. It's got 5 volt power input, which means it theoretically could be powered off of something other than wall jacks, although I have not tested that enough myself. Maybe I'll add something into the video if I get around to testing that. By having a 5 volt barrel plug input, it can be powered via USB power. Uh, I wouldn't recommend running it off battery banks as it would cut through or drain through power like ridiculously quick, but it can be USB powered. You've got optical audio, HDMI out for monitoring the actual operating system of the box if desired, although totally not necessary. You have USB, you have two USB on the side on the back and then one on the side for plugging up either peripherals. So I have a wireless mouse and you can plug in a keyboard to actually control the device or hooking up a flash drive to record some stuff too, although it's a little iffy. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then you have Ethernet hookup if you want to use wired networking. And then over on the other side, you have AV out, which is just a uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack for monitoring. You have a basically reset button that you have to use a paperclip to hit. You have a micro SD card slot, which again, for recording, but it's a little not how I would like. Another USB and then HDMI input, which will accept up to 1080p 60 FPS. All in this nice little package that does get a little hot. It does also accept, so you only have one HDMI input. However, it does accept USB webcams with a new beta functionality that they're still testing. They have tested many of the Logitech webcams, and in my own testing, I hooked up the Logitech Brio webcam, which is a USB 3.0 webcam, mind you, and it mostly worked. There was a little bit of glitchiness to it, which is totally blamable on the Brio itself, based on my experiences with the webcam on the whole, but uh, your mileage may vary, vary. I have not gotten around to testing the C920 or C922 or what have you. I thought I might be able to kind of be a little sneaky with this since it does support USB webcams. Maybe it might support UVC drivers. So I hooked up the Camlink 4K to it, but it did not recognize that as a USB webcam. I would have loved to see an analog audio in. You can't run separate audio to this. This needs to be run through your HDMI source. Use that how you will. So that's unfortunate. But if you do set up a USB webcam, you can set that up to use the USB audio, which could allow you some other workarounds for getting your audio input into the system. On the front, you do have an LED screen, which lights up and shows you the status of if it's recording, uh, shows you your stream keys or your sync keys if you need to pair it to the different streaming services and things like that. So that's super handy to have. And then over on the Wi-Fi side, you have the multifunction power button, which I am not a fan of because you use the same button to turn it on if you hold it in, to turn it off if you hold it in, 
to start streaming to select things in the menu if you're not using the keyboard and mouse to control it. Which seems fine, but I would have much rather have a dedicated button just for the, for the weird one-off scenarios where you actually accidentally enable something when you're trying to turn it off. Like during my Twitch stream testing, I accidentally started another stream while holding in the button to turn it off. Eventually it turned off, but then it did stream for about 11 seconds or so, which in some situations would be considered unacceptable. In my little, you know, Twitch testing environment, no one's really going to care. But in some, you know, more professional scenarios, that would not be an acceptable thing to have happened. The enclosure acts very much as a heat sink for the device, and it does get quite toasty. Not enough to, like, physically burn you, but it was... It got quite warm during just my testing, even when I wasn't streaming, and definitely when I was streaming. But again, nothing too dangerous, but that's how they keep it so small, as the actual chassis acts as the heatsink. So you can run multiple inputs if you do use USB webcams, and they do actually have a layout editor, so you can set up picture-in-picture -picture modes. And this was actually a lot of fun, as they have multiple different layout setups you can configure. So you can configure having your webcam in the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and then you can adjust the size of it, and there's hotkeys on the keyboard to switch between the layouts and to adjust the size of them. You can actually adjust the intake resolution of your USB webcam, which would allow you to pull it in at 1080p down to 240p or whatever. But you can't crop it or adjust the aspect ratio, which I found a little annoying. So it was only 16 by 9 mode, so you can end up with a little awkward crop of your webcam if you are used to making it a square. Uh, and then they have some cool layouts, with, like side by side, and have the webcam smaller and the gameplay bigger, or just switch between full, full view scenes and things like that. I would love to see the ability to add in graphics. That doesn't seem to be an option at the moment, and it's probably you know one of the selling points of their bigger Epifan Pearl uh, lineup of products, which I've previously covered in the past, which can support that, but would be kind of icing on the cake, if you will, for this. Overall, it's extremely easy to set up and use, and it can sync up to a bunch of major streaming services, a bunch of third-party ones I don't recognize, plus YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. And so, I, in my testing, I was just running my PlayStation 4 into it with a webcam and live streaming to Twitch with it, and it turned out pretty good. Like, this would replace a dedicated streaming PC for a lot of people, other than some, you know, certain nuances of if you wanted more advanced configuration, which I will, I will touch on in a minute. Uh, in terms of actual streaming quality, you're not going to really notice it being any different than any average streaming service. Like, there's a whole lot of, on the advanced side of, like, super enthusiasts trying to, like, pixel peep and get every last little extra bit of streaming quality out, but most people aren't going to notice or care. It does top out, officially, at 4 megabits per second to any streaming service, which to me is kind of disappointing. Twitch tops out at 6 megabits per second at the moment. I would love to see a 6 or 8 megabit option for Twitch and YouTube, respectively. Uh, but... Overall, it's not going to matter. People aren't going to care too, too much. It does get a little macro blocky at times, especially if you have too much on screen. Uh, but so does every other Twitch stream that isn't super crazy configured. Again, I would love to see it. They, I did ask my Epifan representative person, and they did say that they could like manually enable it for people that need to force it. But I, I would love to see the UI updated just to support it because I see no... <laughs> <clears throat> I see no reason not to, or I see no reason to restrict the user in terms of what bitrate they use. Even if it's like you have to be on wired to enable the higher bit rates, it, it just doesn't make sense to limit the user just based on what you think they might top out at. That, that, that just seems really weird to me. Um, in terms of recording, I mentioned you can actually record to a USB flash drive if formatted to FAT32 or a micro SD card if formatted to FAT32. But you can only record if you're sending video to their AV Studio streaming service thing, which to do basic usage of seems to be free. So I'm not going to complain about there, but you can't like stream to Twitch and record that locally. And I feel like that's a huge limitation, especially when they could potentially adapt that AV Studio integration because the AV Studio stuff seems pretty cool. And you might be able to redirect that to Twitch. I honestly haven't had time to look into it a ton. But you can stream to it and have that forward to different services. And you can also record to it. And then it has a little video editor where you can pull in different recordings from different like devices that you have encoders sent to. And even add your own pre-roll and post-roll video clips to it. And then render it out in a final video. Again, you're limited to that 4 megabit per second bit rate. Which is fine for live streaming services. Not fine for YouTube or, you know, like final upload where it's going to get compressed again. Still a limitation. 
but I, I would really love to see if you could just dump a copy of the live stream that you're sending somewhere else since it's already low bitrate to the SD card. That seems like a huge limitation to me. But again, that's probably another pro product segmentation of their Epifan Pearl line. I did mention that it's kind of limiting in terms of what you can display in the feed since, you know, you only have one input, you don't have a whole lot of graphics. You could work around this by sending your OBS projector preview to this and use this basically as a capture card. This is how some people get around the 60 hertz to high refresh rate limit on some capture cards. You could actually set up an OBS layout and use like a stream deck or something to switch scenes on your computer and have that send out and send the copy of the audio out via HDMI to this and just use your computer as the switcher and send this as your dedicated encoder to offload the encoding process from your computer, which is a freaking awesome workaround in my opinion. The only hang up there is if you're specifically trying to get a secondary streaming device because you're running into the 90% GPU limitation issue, which they're trying to actually work on with some new versions of OBS coming out soon. Uh, but if, you, if that's not an issue for you and you're already using a computer or whatever, you can use OBS as the existing switcher and stream layout setup and just use this as the final encoder and it saves you from having a dedicated computer for that. Pretty cool use case. So I do have one of these to give away to you guys. I will have, I don't know exactly what service at the time I'm recording I'm using, but I will have a link in the video description. I need you to either submit a picture or a video clip of your current streaming hardware as kind of, you know, just like a barrier of entry here of your current streaming setup to show like why you need an upgrade or what you're working with and how this would benefit your setup. Just like 30 seconds of video or a photo of your craptastic streaming setup if that is the case for you. And you can be entered to win. I do have one of these. It will be continental US only since I am shipping it out, unfortunately. Uh, but I definitely want to get one of these into the hands of you all and hear what you have to think. And otherwise, it is a pretty solid replacement for a streaming PC in many scenarios. Like I said, I've already got some of my local sports broadcasting buddies using these and they have been loving it. But it is a closed-in system. This is already a second revision, so eventually, you know, there will be something better and there's a limited upgradability in this thing. But for the cost and for the physical footprint, I think it's something people should definitely consider. If you like this video, hit the like button, check out the product links in the video description, subscribe for more tech education, and be sure to enter the giveaway if you're interested. I'm Fox. I'll see you next time.